The Well-Integrated Screening and Evaluation for Women Across the Nation, or Wise Woman Program, is an extension of the Breast and Cervical Cancer Control Program, or BCCCP. Women are only eligible for the Wise Woman Program if they are first enrolled in BCCCP. The main focus of Wise Woman is to help participants understand and make healthy lifestyle choices with a focus on nutrition, physical activity, and smoking cessation. Leading a healthy lifestyle will help with current chronic disease risk factors and symptoms. It may also prevent or delay the development of new chronic disease risk factors. So, who are the women of Wise Woman? We're women of 40 to 64 years old. We must meet certain income requirements. We get screenings for body mass index, blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, and family health history. We work hard at making behavior changes around eating healthier, exercising more, or quitting smoking. We work with Wise Woman Lifestyle Counselors to improve our health and the health of our families. In the summer of 2011, we gathered a group of Wise Woman participants from Manistee County and asked them, what are the barriers in your community to staying healthy? We used PhotoVoice, a research method developed by Carolyn Wang at the University of Michigan to help answer these questions. PhotoVoice has three primary purposes. It allows people to record and reflect on their community's strengths and concerns. It encourages dialogue and knowledge about important issues through large and small group discussions of photographs. And it reaches out to policymakers and community change makers. The Wise Woman Photo Voice participants attended a photography class taught by an employee at a local camera shop. After they learned how to use their cameras, we asked them to go out into the community and photograph what they saw that made it difficult for them to be healthier at home and in their community. They came back to the group and discussed the photos they had taken and what each meant to them. They discovered some common themes. They shared and they brainstormed. Here are their answers to the question, what are the barriers in your community to staying healthy? Changing our behavior is hard. Life can present us with many barriers. Some barriers are personal. Between my part-time job and going back to school, my schedule changes from week to week. And now that I'm taking care of my grandchildren, I just can't seem to plan for anything. It's especially bad in the winter. I have no support at home when it comes to getting exercise. I'd love to get the family signed up at the gym, but there's no way we can afford the membership. How many times have I tried to lose weight? I just don't have it in me to try again. I always seem to fail. I have been looking for a job for almost a year, and my husband got laid off nearly six months ago. We've had to do without so much. It's really stressful. And when I get stressed, I start eating all the wrong things. But other barriers are more the result of the environment in which we live. Sometimes there's barely time to take a shower, let alone cook a meal. But when I look up and down the streets of my community, this is what I see. Not a lot of healthy choices. And even if they do offer healthy choices, the healthy ones are usually more expensive. For every 50 fast food places, you'll find only one market where you can get fresh fruits and vegetables. For many of us who live in the rural areas, we have to drive a lot of miles to get to the grocery store that has everything. And with the price of gas these days... Well, driving to those stores doesn't happen very often. Every time I get out on the road to walk, I feel like I take my life in my hands. The only road with even a little bit of a place to walk is the main road through town. The speed limit on it is 55 miles per hour, but everyone goes much faster. Even walking the back roads can be dangerous. I don't have a walking lane or path near my house, and the cars on the back roads really get flying fast. 
It's scary with nothing but a tiny strip of dirt between you and the car. It's the road, a big drop, and dirt. Walking off the road also means lots of hazards. This is what my socks looked like after the last time I walked along the side of the road. Many of the roadsides around here are sandy and too dangerous to ride my bike on. And littered with trash. It's just not very safe. Or inviting. For women who must use assistive devices, the barriers to physical activity can be even greater. What seems like nothing to someone without a walker or a cane becomes a great barrier for those of us trying to get around with one. You know, it's so frustrating to visit the beach only to have the walkway covered with sand and no way to get down the path with my walker. But there are some things in the community that are working. but there's so much more that can be done. We understand that times are tough. But tough times can also bring out some real creativity. Just down the road, we have a vacant elementary school. All the playground equipment is just sitting there. It sure would be nice to have access to it, or maybe even move it to the park where everyone could enjoy it. It would be so helpful if we could just find a way to slow down the traffic on the highway. How about a sign on M55 as you're entering town saying, Welcome to Wellston. Please slow down and enjoy our town. Or create more community gardens where we can support and learn from one another. It might be helpful to survey the community to find out exactly what people would need to help them be more healthy. Because being more healthy is what it's all about.